for the I for the Latin American Theater Festival, I have worked on the cabaret show, to national cabaret show here. But this is Tucha. Most of you have already talked to her and heard what she had to say about the this topic yesterday. We created a showcase called South by the Southwest. That's been a very critical endeavor very difficult to materialize but it has produced its fruits already so when we introduce Vive Latinos list of artists we had eight Colombian bands Perine, Puerto Candelaria all these bands have gone through Lisa Sertucci's platform and that in that way we have provided some support to the internationalization of the Colombian music. And somehow, during these 10 years, uh, the presentation of the Iberoamerican theater show, in the festival we only present Colombian music, excepting, except some very uh, small cases where we have different bands from different countries. And we always receive tons and tons of Colombian music. And I remember, I have an anecdote. I remember a programmer, he was called Tom, the Latin programmer for Austin, Texas University. What's his name? His name is Joe. He came as a programmer. He programs dance, music, and theater. So the Texan University, I think, is the fourth biggest in the United States based on the number of people that attended. So he told me that it can be true. In Colombia, you cannot have this incredible music and no one know about it. Uh, he was talking about choral group in Providence, Van Paralabad, in Pasto, that's down south. Then we had, that day we had, hundreds and hundreds of names and bands going through during those few weeks. He was telling me that we have a big amount of production of music. I'm sure he told me that this is a very big boom here in Colombia. Nevertheless, actors, they came together to come up with a law called Fanny Mickey filmmakers also came together and they produced a law called Cinematics Law and I think that the real and the biggest artistic creation here in Colombia is related to music and I think we have a big space, a big opportunity to improve. We have a big production of music nevertheless our musicians have not had the initiative of come together to promote a music law that is going to benefit the music industry, including creators, authors, all the promoters, or a law that could benefit artists above all. So I decided somehow to produce a balance, first of all. I wanted to talk about what this law should be like. I wanted, first of all, talk about what our legislation looks like in terms of music. I look at different countries that have music laws. For example, Argentina, that's the closest case to us. And I think they have a very high music circulation and they have also generated a lot of employment around the music industry. So my presentation is called Perspectives of the Indo Music Industry in Colombia. That's why I don't call it Law Project for the music in Colombia. That's why I have called it that way. So I would like to have all your participation, participation from all of you. I'm going to read through this a little bit. We are going to have uh, take a look at some legal issues, but I'm going to do this very quickly because I don't want to bore you. First of all, I want to invite you. I'm going to open this portal very soon. It's called Amigos por la Música 
Friends United for the music. So this is a way to participate, I believe, digital. And I think we have to use it to start building together this music law, music legislation. I think that without your participation, we're not going to get anywhere. So in our Congress, the ones that go through, the ones that are approved, are the ones that have a lot of pressure from different people. So if we had signatures from a lot of people from the music industry, I think, and I'm sure that we should be able to get this law approved. That's why we say that together we could turn this into reality. So I'm going to talk about four different things very quickly. Why music is important here in Colombia, why music is fostered in Colombia, how do we foster it from a law standpoint, why is it important to create or have music law here in Colombia, what's the law in different countries. So I'm going to talk about Argentina in that case. There is a law in Argentina and I think that's a very good example. And there is also a law related to music in France, which is incredible. I think you need to ha take a look at it. Why is music important here in Colombia? I think this slide should be removed. All of you know why, these mu why music is important in our country. It's a way to express human feeling. It's a universal language. It contains and molds our culture. And it's also generating a lot of empl uh, employment in Colombia. We have an industry in Colombia, and that's why we are being able to reach different markets in our country and abroad. We have different efforts from the Chamber of Commerce, for example. We have efforts from different government institutions, and the industry has grown in that way, and it's been generating some revenue and income here in Colombia. How do we foster music here in Colombia? We have different laws. Laws 23 from 1982, 14, 93 from 1998, 232 from 1995, and other international treaties that we use here in Colombia related to copyright. So. There is an instance from the United Nations related to copyright, and they have debated different treaties, international treaties that today have been signed by Colombia, or nowadays we belong to those treaties, and they govern copyright issues in our country. So what are copyright? What is copyright? So. Here we talk about getting revenue from the creation of some artwork. We here talk about all the resources that we have as authors, creators. Those are detailed here. So if I talk about this here on this slide, the reason behind this is that the legislation that we have related to music here in Colombia is legislation that is designed for an old business, which is related to the record companies. So what the lawmakers were thinking about then was the product, not the artist. So the legislation is based on a product, not the artist. And that's why copyright is important, but not for the artist. There is no legislation that promotes or fosters the rights of the artist. They only talk about the rights of the work itself. So, Law 23 from 1982, let's think about this. Back in 1982, we didn't even have internet. They talk about protecting the authors, interpreters, and the stations that disseminate the work. It also defines the way the work is protected. It talks about the penalties that are imposed on the people who violate the law, and this is something that has been changed, but there are some parts of this law still in effect. Then we have this one. This is the biggest part of the legislation in Colombia related to performances from 1993. This law defines what a public spectacle is what a public performance is, the rights, the permanent rights, the 
transitional rights. What's not part of this law is cinema, bullfighting, spectacles, and some other public performances. This only talks about public performances considered Arts. So we're not talking about religion or fashion shows, things like that. So on the other hand, it also established the taxes that have to be paid by the people who produce events like this. So as part of this, we have performances that have to pay VAT and taxes related to cultural activity. And then it establishes that the producers have to register themselves uh, before the culture ministry. It talks about the requirements that the local authority have related to venues and the 20 days that we have to answer if you're going to put together a public performance, the authorities should answer to you within 20 days. Otherwise, they have to be subject to penalties. But that's something that we don't have here that doesn't happen. This also, this law also talks about artists from abroad. They have to be treated the right way. and. They also have to pay taxes here when they have to perform in our country. I don't want to bore you with this issue, but the important thing from this law is that this is the core or of our legislation. If you want to look at the detail, and I would like you to do so, this is the law 1493 from 1993. Then we have law 565 from 2000 which applies the treaty from OMPI, this UN entity related to the dissemination of music. It also talks about Colombia signing some treaties related to copyright, international copyright, so that's why it's applicable as part of our national legislation. The following law is 545, which defines what an artist is, an interpreter is, or the creator of a piece of art is. This is important because now the author is protected. If you sing a song from someone else, the person who created that song has to be paid. And the people also performing that song, for example, they have to be paid. So also, this law also talks about, it, this law also talks about the compensation that people are entitled to when they perform the live. This is also very important because one of the proposals that we have had not only for in terms of generation of an audience here in Colombia, but also for the acknowledgement of the national music as a valid art, is a law that has the talks about the minimum amounts that the different media outlets have to pay when they play Colombian music. Now our media outlets, they don't like to play our national songs. There are some programmers that say, hey, I do not play Colombian music. I should have the right to do it. That's, uh, that's what happens in Venezuela, Argentina, and France. That's also a right in Holland. And Colombia should be there. Our music is as good or even better than the music produced in these countries, but uh, the way we play it or air it in our radio stations is very poor. Then we have references to the different international entities that we have approached to sign treaties. So, moral and patrimonial rights from the artists, interpreters, or performers. They will conserve the right to be identified as that and also oppose the mutilation, change, or cut in their work. 
that it will be maintained as after their deaths. And I think that it is up to 80 years for their patrimonial rights and authorized broadcasting, communication, reproduction, distribution, and rent. What entities promote music in Colombia? Ministry of Culture, National Direction of Authors' Rights, the Bank of the Republic. Promotion of music in Colombia, Saico, Asim, Prosecol, Da Corem, the Agreement, Anti-Piracy, Abdif, and others of private character. But the interesting thing about this is that how many, without counting those with local competition like the Secretary Ship of Culture in Bogota, which can also promote culture in Colombia. Why is it important to promote music in Colombia? I think so because the music is the first creator of identity in our con country. When we speak about Colombia, we sounds like Colombia, Tierra Querida, this song, or uh, the music that is more proper to Colombia. It has a very powerful identity where the creation of identities is very complicated because it's, it is the number one creative force in Colombia. I already said it, there is no other cultural industry that has as much creation as music here in Colombia because it is the language of our multiculturality. We acknowledge each other as Colombians with the different music we have in the different regions for Pacific, for Caribbean, the Llanos, and we know it and we know all our di cultural differences to it because it's the best vehicle to sell a country brand. Brazil ha has done it. Brazil has samba. I don't know that much about Brazilian music. I'm more like into rock, but when they say let's listen to Brazilian music, it could be many things. The difference in Colombian music within Timbiriki, Sola Estéreo, or Cholo Valderrama is very different, but it's a brand. With this show we did with South by Southwest was Sounds of Colombia, integrated all as Colombian music. Why the Colombian rock is not considered like Colombian music by the state when they, it has to do uh, cultural promotion out abroad. There are certain cultures or or culturalities that are acknowledged as such, and we should sell all the Colombian music as one, a brand, and that sells mu Colombia best than everything else. Like with Monsieur Perinet in Belgium, and Chocolate Town has gone to the India, so the Stereo has done many 40 dates of events in the United States. That really promotes the brand of Colombia because around the language of music there is a more conscious citizenship. This is what the state has done with music, with rock to the park, extreme uh, a common living, harmonious living, many useful things that for the Colombian society that go through the Colombian artists and music. How to, to promote music in, uh, how do they promote music in other countries? In Argentina, for example, this national law for music, 2006, why was it built? How? What were the objectives? What were the main actions? Its risk opportunities? What does it teach Colombia to build our own law? What was it built for? This definition is very interesting. It is a function of the state to do cultural policy directly, but there is also a need of artistic expression from people that have to be promoted. Those are the cultural antibodies that a society generates against everything that is hegemonic in a market that is every time more, ever more globalized. That is why the state should contain and promote part of these artistic expressions so that it may give tools to the society for to do cultural policy through its artists. There are two fundamental risks from Plato to our times, aesthetization of politics, it has been a political control from communism, for example, and politicization of arts. We have seen this with the Cuban Trova. 
songs. Both can be very risky. They can both compromise the comprehension a country has. And it can also compromise the artist's expression. So it is very important for the state. It's obliged to do a policy directly, but respecting the need for expression, artistic expression. And many times they are not in the main flow. So y you cannot stop making a, a, a cultural policy, but you cannot repress artist expression because those scenarios have been promoted from the states. How to construct it, how to build it. I think uh, everyone in this room would play a role here. The first thing they did was to convoke musicians through a web page to then bring them together in all the cultural regions. And they took all the databases of emails that participated to carry out this work. They did it through meetings of cultural regions. Colombia has so many cultural regions. Pacific and Atlantic coast, the Cundiboyacense zones, the Llanos Oriental is the south of the country. All these have very different cultural expressions. So the needs of the cultural industry in each one of these regions is different. And they were joined here to see, make a balance of these local needs to have one only proposal for this law of music. There's a link here of where you can find how it was done in Argentina. You might want to see it. It's very interesting. What are the main objectives to improve the general conditions of the Argentinian music and to create the National Institute of Music like the main entity for promotion? And 50% of the sources are destined to broadcasting, promotion. The, these are contributions from this institution for musical creation. And then the other 50% is to subsidize and offer traditional credits to artists who ask for money for a certain project to create s stable circuits of music live, on live music using different channels that are state owned and they made a census of places that were were appropriate for this. We have this in, in Bogota, but we don't have it in, in, in the rest of Colombia. And to promote the participation of the regions for, to you know the benefits and also to, uh, through the different media, and have a cultural circuit for people that are outside of music and promote an integral education of music and knowing about authors' rights. I think it's very necessary in Colombia. Many of us, I had to research all this. I have been a programmer of an event. I have been a manager of artists of Sudaca or Atomico. And I, when I made this analysis, I didn't know the laws that rule this business I am in. I think this is very fundamental for musicians, promoters, to know the law, it's going to be very difficult to play the game, if not. What are the main actions? The creation of the National Institute of Music, the creation of national and regional uh, music libraries, material, cultural material, as in the same way that we have libraries, we ha should have music libraries to see what was being done in the 50s in Colombia in music. What is being done, made today, is the future for the next 20 years of musical creation in our country. And that is not duly not materialized in a base that may be the patrimony of any Colombian, that any Colombian could go there to look for a phonogram as part of his patrimony. Promoting musical events in zones that are outside the conventional music circuit. 
In Colombia, the conventional musical circuit, the one outside should be. In Argentina, there are many possibilities for tours, and those non-conventional places end up doing things that for us are unthinkable. But we, we have to build this network further from what we have, because it's the way that artists can let their product be known. And also, to have a, a federal assembly of music, since they have t different regions, the leaders get together to control this institute for music and to continue promoting from the local to the national this policy of music. And create, they created a committee of representative people they call Charlie Garcia, Pito Paez, the most uh, recognized artist, the Panabasonics, for them to have a voice in this federal assembly. The more experimented artists can be very good broadcasters of the rights of in the musical industry. What are the risks and opportunities? The first opportunities are democratizing the participation of musicians in the decisions of musical promotion, identifying the real musical uh, potential of the country and regions. It creates incentives that resolve the main needs of musicians, but it has the risk of bureaucratizing music. It's a, that's a problem. If you want to be, do it from the state, it's going to become politicized and bureaucratized. But it, it's worse if they don't do anything with this because of these risks. The risk of bureaucratizing the promotion of music and the interest of the musical union in detriment of a real promotion of the m musical creation. And it becomes foreign to the application of promoting music and decentralizes in the musical union, which is working at Honorem, which is in charge of doing what the ch state didn't do. It is giving the actors the tools for them to create a community that promotes music. There, the state's work stops. So when they ask the state to participate, they say no. There you have that institute which you created, there you have your budget to what you have to do. What does it teach Colombia? That musics and artists are the builders of cultural policy in a society with their work. That there is a law and a juridical frame that is clear, concise about music, accessible to any musical and broadcaster or producer. There is only one law for everyone. All the laws we saw here that ruled music were in incorporated in one only law so that anyone that wants to know can see it in, in only one. That it requires an institution that is dedicated exclusively to promote integrity, music integrum. That is the case of this National Institute of Music. I think we are really behind in creating it here in Colombia. I, I know there are people here are doing very well in arts, but arts are the subdivision of another subdivision of another, and that's what happens with music in the Ministry of Culture. So we need an entity that puts music to the level that it is, that the musical creation, it, where it is, it is imperative to be able to build to the future, that we should know what is the real potential of the needs of music in Colombia through measures like a, a census of musicians, uh, music libraries, local and regional, and stable circuits of music life because we know a lot, of a, a, a big part of the music business today is is, is now live. We know when it has been spoken today that there's a lot online, but where the spirit lies, where the business lies in Colombia, at least nowadays, is in the show, live show. And if we cannot create networks for musical circulation and we don't allow artists to go to intermediate cities in Colombia, we, have, we will not have advanced uh, to construct a very strong musical industry. So thank you very much to, for paying attention to this project. And I would like to thank you very much.
I would like this. This is going to be uploaded uh, this weekend, so please look for it. It's called uh, Friends for Music. To participate, it's uh, an open forum for discussion for everyone to say, for me as a an, an editor of songs or managers to say we are lacking stimuli for our projects, for musicians to say what we have to do is to have a law that really regulates payment of artists, prom promoters, whatever you want to contribute. And uh, we, I hope we can make it reality. We can do it, really. Thank you very much. All right. I would like to thank everyone for having been here in this Resonance uh, Señal Radiónica 2013. Thank you to all for your assist attendance. I would like to thank Camila Saravia, Camilo Paz, Jorge Marius Garcia, Juan Sebastián Ortiz, Estefania Marcela, the music called Ping We Attach. Columbia 3.0, and the people that the streaming has followed our panels and music workshops. Thanks, uh, greetings to all. Thanks for connecting with music. Thanks for coming. We hope to continue generating these spaces. We will be contacting you now, and we're going to invite you to Tari to Toto because we have this wonderful show with uh, Superlitio Samper, Duinelmar, live music. Thanks to all.